Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious efforts so that you feel desired and taken care of and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and this is the How to Talk About Sex, Keep It Steamy, and Get What You Want episode. Today, I'm going to share three secret cheat phrases to help you up-level your sex life. My guest, Christine's husband, was sleeping in the spare bedroom. He never initiated sex and rejected her often. She thought there was something very wrong with him. And even though their marriage was okay, she did not want to spend the rest of her life feeling starved for sex. And she wondered if she should outsource that part of the relationship. Instead, she found a solution that she's going to share with us today as she does with her relationship coaching clients, because she not only brought back the passion and skyrocketed the intimacy and the laughter in the bedroom, she is now a successful relationship coach. And she's going to tell us exactly what she did and how you can do the same thing. Then I'll be giving out the award for the worst relationship advice of the week, which you hear absolutely everywhere. And most people think of it as fact. All that's coming up. But first, let's talk about sex. Here are three ways to keep things steamy and get what you want. If the sex in your relationship isn't all you were hoping for, you are not alone. Women tell me there hasn't been any physical intimacy since the baby was born sometimes. And the baby, he's four. Or they say that her husband is always after her for sex, but she just feels used. And that's always lousy. Or she's She's tired of feeling so rushed and pressured in the bedroom. She'll say her husband's idea of foreplay is to say, brace yourself. Of course, these women are frustrated, to say the least. And they're wondering how things are ever going to improve with so much resentment and hurt standing in the way. Life is too short to just suck it up and suffer through an unsatisfying sex life. But what's the alternative? I mean, how do you talk about it, right? After all, talking about sex is awkward and talking during sex can kill the moment. But here are three ways to talk about sex and still get what you want without killing the moment. One is to whisper this at dinner. I mean, as you already know, the advice that you've read absolutely everywhere about how you should set a time to talk about your issues in the bedroom, you know, maybe several conversations, that does not work. And if you're anything like me, you've tried that repeatedly, and it didn't solve the problem. And if it did, you know, we probably wouldn't be talking about this right now. We'd be moving on to, you know, solving, like, world hunger or something. But what will help you get the sex life you want is digging deep to find your own desires in the bedroom, and then expressing them in the positive rather than as complaints. So there's no need to ever say, we need to talk. You're just going to look for a moment when it's only the two of you at dinner, maybe, or maybe in the car, or maybe you're watching TV and the kids are asleep. And then you'll just whisper that desire in his ear. So you'll say, I love it when you and fill in the blank. I would love even more of that, right? I would love that. Or maybe I love it when you're romantic and draw the bath with the rose petals and pour the champagne. I love feeling wooed like that. You you could say that. Or you could say, you know, my fantasy is that we run into each other at a bar and start making out. And then, you know, why whisper those words, you might ask? Well, it's because what you're saying is so intimate. It's private. It's vulnerable. It's a special conversation that only lovers have. And you might be surprised at how well he pays attention when you whisper. Number two thing that you can do or say is make it safe for sex. And you might be thinking, whispering desires is great for some people, but it's not going to work for me because we have bigger problems than just not having fireworks in the bedroom. And I totally get it. I remember when there wasn't any sex happening around here and how desperately I wanted to have that or any form of intimacy for that matter, physical, emotional, spiritual. I didn't want to suffer any further rejection. So whispering something sexy in his ear seems super scary. So if that feels like too much of a leap, consider focusing on the emotional safety outside of the bedroom first, outside of the bedroom. Okay, so the way to create emotional safety is to demonstrate that you won't criticize, you won't complain, you're not going to correct or demean or demand of him. 
impossible, you say. Well, that's what I thought too. After all, sometimes my husband makes mistakes and I am a mere mortal woman. So how would I refrain from pointing those out? I used to let him know about those mistakes again and again. But I'm happy to say I have cut way back on that overrated indulgence. I do not miss the loss of connection and the wall-to-wall hostility that that used to cause or the emotional hangover that I used to feel afterward. I don't miss that at all. So I've upped the respect and I keep my criticisms to myself when they cross my mind, which they do at times, I admit. And in the beginning, I have to admit, I felt like a mute because so much of what I'd been in the habit of saying was critical, complaining, correcting, demeaning, demanding. But being quiet was a learning experience. It gave me time to think about myself and the kind of woman I wanted to be. And not to mention, it gave me time to think about what I wanted, what I wanted in bed, instead of being distracted by what I saw as his shortcomings. And it gave him the space to say things out loud that he wouldn't have before, like what he wanted to do to fix up the house and the backyard or his enthusiasm for going to Mars. Or, you know, when he shared his ideas and I didn't point out what was wrong with them, eventually he realized he was safe. And it turns out safety is sexy. The restored safety between us helped me find my courage to start whispering in his ear. Number three is to give authentic feedback. So when it comes to being aroused, I love that metaphor that men are microwaves and women are slow cookers, right? So if you're engaging in physical intimacy that's not satisfying because it feels too rushed, you might feel mad or hurt that he would be so pushy. But what if he just doesn't realize you're a slow cooker? You might think you're all ready to go instantaneously, just like he is. It took me a while to realize that I was responsible for my own happiness, even in bed, because I wanted my husband to be the one to do the right things at the right time to make me feel good. And I wasn't very good at honoring myself in that moment. And sometimes I would go along just to get along instead of slowing things down the way I really wanted to. And I didn't realize I was teaching him how to treat me, but it wasn't the treatment that I wanted. Now, how could he know unless I gave him authentic feedback? Now, I made the mistake of making sounds that were indicating I was having a good time when I really wasn't. And I was sending the wrong message until I learned to be authentic. Now, authentic doesn't mean negative. Criticism has a very, very chilling effect on the intimacy. And that's never truer than in the bedroom. Complaining just is not sexy. But conveying what I love, Not what I don't love, but conveying what I love, that's authentic. And making sounds that let him know I'm enjoying myself is authentic. And so is stopping when I'm not. So sending a signal with my body language, my smile, and what I'm wearing or not wearing, it's all authentic communication. For me, it helped to stop focusing on talking about sex and start thinking about honoring myself while we were together, even when it was scary. It turns out there's nothing steamier. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. My guest today is Christine, whose husband slept in the spare bedroom, never initiated sex, and rejected her advances often. She thought there was something very wrong with him. And even though their marriage was okay, she didn't want to spend the rest of her life feeling starved for sex and wondered if she should maybe outsource that part of the marriage. Instead, she found a solution that she is going to share with us today, as she does with her coaching clients, because She not only brought back the passion, skyrocketed the intimacy, and the laughter in the bedroom in her marriage, she is now a gifted relationship coach. Christine, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Laura. I'm excited to be here. 
So there was something mostly missing in your marriage. What were things like in those battle days? Hmm. Well, let me tell you uh, one of my darker moments. Um, I was on a trip uh, by myself, uh, and I just come back to the hotel room <clears throat> after meeting with an old friend I hadn't seen in a while. And he, oh my gosh, he hung on to every word that I said. He had these googly eyes and and there was sparks flying. And I felt like, <clears throat> like I was parched in the desert. And he offered me a tall glass of water. And I really wanted to drink from it. I didn't. I got home to the hotel room and I was so angry. I was so angry at my husband. Here, he... Like, I felt like he put me in this position by, by um, rejecting me so often and not giving me what only he could give me. He's the only person in the whole world who could, who could give that physical part to me. And I, so I, you know, I went on the rampage on, on my laptop and I went online and I kind of I armed myself for a talk. I was going to have a really serious talk with him about the unfairness of it. It was so unfair that he wouldn't I felt like a wilting flower like here I'm in my prime and <clears throat> so um yeah I, I I remember how angry I was that night and and honestly that anger felt a lot be better than all that hurt of feeling so undesired and unattractive like there was something wrong with me so I I wrote that anger and I yeah I had that talk and I was gonna I was gonna, I, I was going to tell him if you don't shape up, I'm going to outsource this, outsource this part of it because that's not how I want to go on. So here you were seeing evidence that you were desirable, right? There's sparks with this this male friend, and but he he's not giving you any indication. So you were starved. It becomes an enormous temptation, right? Yeah. When you're when you're not getting that kind of physical attention in your marriage. So I, I, I know you're not the only one to feel that way when the sex goes missing. Um, and so, so you wrote this out and then you, you had this conversation with your husband. Is that right? I did. I did. Yeah. Um, as you can imagine, it didn't go so well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, um, did it, did it result in even one physical encounter did was there did any sex come out of that conversation or no sex came yes out? yeah he he I cajoled him that he wanted to step up and it, and it worked you know worked a few times but not it didn't last it didn't last like any any stuff I would discuss in relationship talks they they work for a while but they wouldn't really last it's very frustrating so so what else did you was there anything else you tried to do to solve the problem? Um, yeah. Well, so maybe I, I give you a before and after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so I would go on these little trips. I could just, you know, talk about one and, uh, I would have a great time. I would either be with friends, go to dinner and or go to a new place or sleep in big, big back then. Um, and then I would come back. And the moment I opened the door, I saw the dirty kitchen. I saw the potato chip bags and McDonald's takeout food. And I saw my son still in the same clothes I left him in. And, um, yeah, I was like, oh. And I felt so resentful. I, you know, got busy in the kitchen cleaning up. And, and, and telling him, was like, is this all you ate? And, and did, you, did you wash him up? Like, oh, I was so, all oh, the joy that I had just got sucked up. And, and it was, yeah, I was, um, yeah, it was not, I was in such a bad place. I wish I hadn't left, really. So, so he wasn't stepping up to be the kind of dad. Yeah, I mean, you left your son with him thinking he was going to be in good care, and, and he really wasn't, it sounds like. It sounds like he was kind of neglected. Yeah, I mean, I think they had a good time, but, but um, it's all I saw, really, it's all I saw, and, and I, I worked myself in the state. Uh, so that's the before. Now after, I still get to go on those kind of trips. So I come back, you know, all filled up and bubbly and happy. And I open the door 
and there might be a dirty kitchen, there might be potato chips there, and there, all of that. I don't really see that now. And instead, I'm so excited, like, oh, I had the greatest time. And he would pull me in for a hug and a kiss. And, and, and my son would be happy to see me too. And there might be a pillow fight. And I would just appreciate him. It's like, thank you so much that I get to go on those trips. Thanks for taking care of our son. And I would also notice two other things. Like one, when our son was really little, I didn't get to do any of it because he wanted to be with me all the time our son and so I'm I'm really thankful that our son has this great relationship with his dad now that um and then he sometimes even asks me hey when are you going on a trip again <laughs> <laughs> like you can't wait to see that boys weekend that is and, a wonderful thing for mom guilt right that erases all yeah. mom guilt if he yeah. if dad is actually saying why don't you go go ahead mom have fun yeah. we don't we, yeah. Yeah, we'll be fine so and also, I mean, also really, uh, he works so hard. I get to know the money is not a problem. I get to I get to go on those trips, mm-hmm. and 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 I keep all this in mind. But while I and, and most likely these days the kitchen will be clean, actually, especially for me because he knows what I like, and he will, you know, he he really wants to please me, and he, it's it's so that is different too. So you know, two things working. Wow. Okay, so well, so. Th- so what what happened? What did you do? How did you change all this? Because it sounds like it's very different. It's, it's my um, attitude, attitude of gratitude, where I focused on uh, what I do want, what I do like. Um, in the beginning, that was really hard. I was so resistant. I was like, well, I work hard too. <clears throat> uh, and well, you should be doing this. And uh, yeah, I really just focus on what I what wasn't there and now I I really I have a I have a habit of going to bed and writing down my gratitudes for the day it's five I don't go to bed until I have my five gratitudes for the day and I focus on all the things and it, it really in the beginning when I did that and had this resistance I I got past it because I noticed it was like a something set in motion where I now, because I needed my five things, <laughs> I looked and I, so I looked like, what? Oh, oh, he put a dish in there. Uh, he put a, you know, dish in the sink. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. I got my fifth thing. Something like that where, um, yeah, I really shifted my focus. So you, as a discipline, started doing these five things every night and then it forced you to have to open your eyes a little wider. And then when you did that, you were able to find more evidence of the things he was doing that you were grateful for. It sounds. Yeah, it was, it was an upward spiral. And also by me telling him that I would, Oh, I got really creative. I would write little notes. Um, I would, you know, put like, thanks for being the breadwinner into the loaf of bread. Uh, <laughs> put some steamy note into his bathroom. Uh, 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 fogged up the, the bathroom mirror and wrote on it. Like, yeah, I had, I had a lot of fun with it. And he would tell me, like, sometimes I would write him long texts or long emails. And he said, that feels so good. Like, he was oh. parched almost. And, and, yeah, that really made a difference for him. So you, so there's a, kind of a, a metaphor here. You were parched, uh, feeling physically undesired. But your husband was, you also got to see that he was feeling parched for this uh, appreciation and gratitude that you yeah. then needed to bring to him. And so, and so how did this affect the sex? What happened with the sex? <laughs> well, um, we have, uh, right now we have dating sex, I call it. We're also in this <laughs> lovely place. And, uh, and um, one time he uh, invited me into a shower and it wasn't to get me all cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't care about that. <laughs> um yeah is is um it's it is variety there's i don't ever get rejected because oh. i don't always, like it wouldn't i wouldn't get rejected but also i don't initiate it's all him he's the one who's pursuing me and he's wanting to spend time with me or where i i have to laugh about that but like i even thought the other day i spend too much time <laughs> <laughs> what what's like that's crazy 
was really seeking me out and really wanting to spend time with me. And sometimes I'd be going and I'd client calls. I could be, oh, oh, I know you got to go. Don't like it, but okay. Oh, I love that. So it sounds like things are a lot steamier than they were. What, uh, what, if you could go back in time and just talk to yourself um, from the time when, when you were feeling so parched in the desert, uh, what do you know now that you would say to yourself? Well, um, so I envision this like conversation I'd be having with her and she'd probably be out on the walk, really sad. Um, about the state, like how, how it was, and I would, you know, just want to give her a long hug, and and um, yeah, well, I would, and I would give her that hug because the only way she knows how to get what she wants is is by um, you know telling the truth, and you know telling what she really thinks, and that he should shape up, and you know that that, that conversation <laughs> that I had with him. So I would tell us, like, remember. Remember how you had that conversation and uh, you worked for a while and then, you know, it didn't really last and drifted away again. And she'd be like, yeah, what's up with that? It's always like that. You know, it changes when I talk to him, but then it just, bah. And so it's like, yeah, okay, well, I hear you. It's tough. And let me tell you a secret. And she'd be like, okay, what is it? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I would tell her, it's like, yeah. You can have everything you want, but you have to trade short-term, what you say, short-term gain for long-term loss because you're causing a lot of damage with these relationship talks and having to tell them everything that's on your mind and tell them everything you don't like. Um, but instead, you know, you, you'll, you'll be learning something else that will be really effective and you can have everything you want, even the sex in the shower. And she'd be like, oh, what? She'd be so excited to get some answers. <laughs> I love that answer. So this is probably, these are some of the things that you help your clients with too, I bet. Yes. It's a, it's, um, well, it's, you know, it's different. Some clients, they, they do have sex, but they don't really enjoy it. So it's, you know, that's a different kind of problem. Uh, but the people that, that the, the women that don't have it, is I tell him it's, there's no direct route. You can't ask, you know, if you go to him and say, you know, like I did, you better shape up or whatever, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't inspire him. It's, it's going to be very off-putting. Uh, like, and I might even say, like, what if he came to you and said, you better have sex or else, or I'm going to have another woman, or I'm going to, you know, like, it's not inspiring at all. It's like, well, now I want it even less. <laughs> That's right. No. <laughs> right? Doesn't sound very loving, does it? No, yeah. no. Um, but I'd probably share with her what I did, like the, that the gratitude worked so well for me, where you know, within two weeks, really, within two weeks of me doing that, my relationship felt revitalized. I felt, you know, the playfulness was back. Even early on, like it took more over time, but I had really fast success early on with, with, with gratitude. That was, yeah. And it's, and you talk about this, like the the playfulness being back, the laughter being back. So it wasn't just the sex that was missing. There was this other aspect of that's something that lovers do, right? Is laugh together, and that was yes, missing too. yes. And I tell you, we were. There was one moment when I thought, "Oh wow, this is working." When he, we were driving in the car, and he reached over and held my hand. I almost cried because. I hadn't even noticed how all that went out the window too. Like we were really physical, like holding hands, hugging, cuddling, all that good stuff. And it had just, poof, I don't know, over time. And I, I never knew. Why did, I mean, now I know. Now I know exactly all the things that I did wrong along the way. But back then, I had no idea. Wow. And so uh, this feels like, so you call it dating sex. It sounds like you're, whole relationship feels like dating again there's hand holding there's yes play. oh yes and it feels so cherished <laughs> the other day we were walking with our dog and uh he never did any of the you know housework or taking out the trash like that physical stuff in the house it was all me so we were on a walk and uh it's our dog just had done her business and i had to poop bag was gonna scoop it up and he he takes it from me 
and he scooped up the poop. And he's like, oh, thank you. Like he, I don't know, he, he does a dirty work for me now. Just maybe, yeah, you know, I feel like a princess. Like, oh, I didn't have to get my hands dirty. So things I like that, that all the time. Um, or he, he makes breakfast for me. Oh. It, it's like, I don't think he's ever done that. Like ever, even the beginning. So things like that. It's really playful, passionate. It's, it's, I have no idea it could be this way. So, thank you, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christine, this is so inspiring to hear your amazing story of going from feeling like you were starved for sex and wondering if you should go somewhere else to get it, to feeling like the princess who's cherished your husband does the dirty work for you and pulls you into the shower, uh, not to get you clean, but uh, <laughs> I was like the yeah. passion is back. So, congratulations on the transformation in your marriage and well done with uh, passing it on to other women. In fact, I know that some of this is, is hard to talk about, right? Talking about the problems that you were having in your marriage, it can be kind of embarrassing, but but you've been willing to share with us today. I, I want to just ask you, what has you be willing to talk about this so openly? Oh, it's it's like, you know, the question you asked me earlier about what would you tell her now, that you know now? I don't know exactly the question yet. That's exactly. I, I had no idea. I was I was um, always searching around, and there's so much. I was I got so angry after I discovered the intimacy skills and that conventional advice. I'm so sensible. Like never go to bed angry. Uh, it takes two to have a good relationship. Uh, you know, I have to talk about your problems. That kind of things. Like I'm so mad because I followed this advice, and it got me a distant husband who never wanted to have sex with me. So I. I, um, yeah, well, I, I couldn't not become a coach and pass this on. I, it wasn't in my plans. I'm a stay at home mom and, you know, homeschooling a dad, but I couldn't not because, because I had wished that I learned these skills from you. Wow. Well, it sure is powerful to hear your amazing story. You sound like, uh, I mean, I know you're a very gifted coach. And so this is really generous of you to share all this with us today. Thank you so much, Christine. You're so welcome. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at GetCherished.com. Go to GetCherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. Now it's time for the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award. It's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice. Yeah, it's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week. And the advice that's offending me this week is you should go to marriage counseling. I know that marriage counselors are good people who want to help, and I know some of them are amazing, but a lot of students who come to our campus for relationship coaching have just been through marriage counseling, and it did not fix their relationship, and now that I know what actually worked to transform my broken marriage into a playful and passionate relationship, there are aspects of marriage counseling that just don't make any sense, like that you would complain about your husband to a stranger right in front of him. Well, now that I know how important respect is to my husband and how disrespectful that is, I know that was just digging my hole deeper when I did that in marriage counseling. And on top of that, no couple ever got happier by complaining about each other for an hour a week. That just doesn't work. Another problem is that the not so secret reason I was in marriage counseling was not so I could self reflect and get better as a person and therefore have a better marriage. No, that wasn't my reason. I was there so she could fix him and then I would finally be happy, which never worked. Of course it didn't. That is not how life works. But I don't think I'm the only one who dragged her husband to marriage counseling with that intention. And that's a terrible setup for unnecessary frustration and and disappointment. And there is nothing wrong with wanting professional help. 
And we've all been taught that marriage counselors are where we should turn when the relationship has left happily ever after highway. But it wasn't pointing out my husband's flaws that got me back onto a smooth road. It was getting to work fixing my own flaws and learning the intimacy skills and having the connection framework that got me the marriage of my dreams and also made me more confident and calmer, more dignified. It wasn't easy to go through the door marked self-reflection and personal development at first to get the kind of playful, passionate relationship I had always wanted. But I'm so glad I did because it also gave me the kind of life I wanted, the kind of friendships, the kind of career and family relationships I wanted. And just like Maya Angelou says, I wouldn't trade nothing for my journey now. It all started out with a broken marriage. Turns out there's no such thing as working on a relationship. There's only improving yourself. And what an incredible difference that makes when it comes to creating a playful, passionate relationship. And for that reason, you should go to marriage counseling is the worst advice I've heard all week. Be sure to subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll be sharing how to be happily married to a narcissist or a very self-absorbed man. And today's fun fact is that a physical therapist once called me Quadzilla because of my overdeveloped thigh muscles. So let's see who can waltz it the longest. Loser buys drinks. Until we talk again, take good care of you.